Hey there guys, it's Lee here. Hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to mine BurstCoin using your hard drives. So this is part three of three of this BurstCoin series. Um, if you haven't already set up your BurstCoin wallet, please check out the video for that. In addition, you're also going to need to have set up uh, BurstCoin uh, plots on your actual hard drives. Um, and I've also made a video about that as well. So you need to have these two things in place. You need to have the wallet in place and you need to have your hard drive plots in place before you can proceed on to the mining. So if you haven't already done that, check out those videos uh, first. Um, with that out of the way, um, I'll be jumping over to the, the other machine and I'll be showing you how to actually mine your burst coin plots. Okay guys, so I've just uh, jumped over to the actual Windows machine that I'm gonna uh, be sharing the uh, demonstration uh, on. So it's Windows 10 machine, but you can use uh, various other versions of Windows. So what I'm gonna show you first is just opening up your uh, BurstCoin wallet. So from the actual BurstCoin folder, um, links in the description, you just run the bat file, and then you just double click and open the um, shortcut to the BurstCoin wallet, which opens up your browser. And then it looks, uh, it gives you a page just like this one. Uh, from there we're just going to log in so we're going to copy our password for the demo account and we're going to paste it into there i'm going to select uh, remember the password during this session just to make it a little bit easier um, it's also possible to do this via the uh, web wallet as well um, i'll put a link to that in the uh, description also so from the actual main um, dashboard what we're going to be doing is actually changing the reward recipient so what it does is it uh, changes the this account and any uh, blocks that are found by us they will automatically be redistributed to the pool and then we'll uh, get our actual mining earnings uh, from the pool itself so in order to do that you find a pool that you might want to use and the pool that I would recommend is uh, pool.burst-team.us kind of a complicated uh, description link um, I'll put a link to that in the description as well as. But this is the pool that we're going to be using. There's another one as well, which is burst.ninja, but that's really for bigger miners. But this pool is better for beginners and it runs on the same code. Um, anyway, so what you want from this um, pool is you want to get the reward uh, recipient. So in this case, it's this up here, which is just a burst coin address. So we just want to copy that and just paste it somewhere. You can see I've already done it um, down here. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to go back to our burst coin wallet, either the local wallet or the online wallet. And then in the actual address bar, you want to copy and paste this reward assignment.html. So where you've got the actual page, which is, so you've got like your local host and then you've got the pool, and then you've got forward slash index.html. We want to change that to reward assignment.html. So technically we're kind of going to a different page on our own Kind of mini web server that's probably the easiest way to explain it and um, so we press that and press enter okay and then down the bottom we have a uh, set reward recipient passphrase and recipient so in the recipient box we want the pools address so we'll paste that in there and then we want our password so i'm going to copy that as well paste that then we want to submit it yeah, and then you'll get this um, hash, which looks just like this one. Um, and that's an indicator that it's all gone through um, normally. So if I just go back to the uh, index now, we'll probably have to re-log in. Oh. Index HTML. So we'll have to re-log in now, which is fine. that makes that okay so just close that there okay so you can see there's got this like this kind of transaction and that's actually the reward uh, recipient transaction so that takes um, a couple of blocks to go through um, I think it's about six blocks but if you just leave it for 10 minutes that will go through um, nicely and then what it's done is it's actually linked our uh, burst coin wallet to the uh, pool itself um, so that's the most important thing. If you're solo mining, um, I'm not really going to get into the details of, of doing that, but if you're solo mining, you don't need to do this step. 
Okay, so now that we've set our reward recipient, the next thing to do is actually um, download the Burstcoin miner and um, get that set up and running so it's actually mining um, on your plots. So there's uh, a couple of different miners. Uh, I'll show you two of the most popular ones. One is a CPU miner called Blago's uh, CPU miner, uh, sorry, Burstcoin miner. And the other one is a uh, GPU miner for OpenCL devices. Um, I'll show you both of those. So I'll show you with a um, slightly older version, seeing as that newer one doesn't work for some reason. And then I'll just change our configuration um, to match. Um, Okay, so I just need to change the actual pool details to the correct pool. Pool is uh, 8124. You can leave the other details. The update address, the winner address, you can leave all those as they are. And then you just need to change the actual paths to what's appropriate for you. Um, cash size, uh, use boost. Yeah, you want the boost on if it works. If it doesn't work, then then disable it. Um, save that. So let's close this other notepad here. Okay, so if I go back to the slightly um, older miner, and um, it should run this time. Just heard the hard drive uh, spin up there, it's been idle. So that's a good indicator. Okay, let's just uh, center that. Okay, so that's actually gone through. So it's got um, some basic information. It tells you what um, your system details are. It tells you your pool address, the updater address, and it tells you the plot. So if you've got multiple plots and multiple drives, it tells you the information about those. So it's currently detected two files and the total uh, plot sizes, which is correct. Um, and then what it does is it scans through, see if there's any deadlines, and if there are deadlines, it reports those to the pool. And because we have such a small um, amount of plots, um, it hasn't found anything to report. And then what will happen is, um, each time a new block is found, which is approximately every four minutes, it will go through a cycle, it will scan your hard drives again, and it will report any deadlines, and it will keep on repeating that process over and over. Um, so that's it. So you basically, you just leave that CPU miner uh, running, and it will um, continue to work. I'll just show you very quickly just so you can get a better idea of how the Blago Miner um, works uh, if you have more plots um, or across more drives or bigger plots themselves. Um, so I've just remote logged into one of my machines and then I'll just show you um, how it looks if you have an uh, um, increased number of plots. So on this machine there is um, about 50 terabytes worth of um, hard drives plugged in um, and I'll just show you how that sort of looks uh, with the Miner running. Okay, so you can see at the top it's found lots of different hard drives and the plots that are on them and also the reported sizes and it gives you a total there. So then, yeah, so this just gives you a better look at the actual sort of interface. So what it does is it um, scans through your hard drives, it finds them, then it reports them to the pool and then it gets a confirmation from the pool that you've got these deadlines. So what you're looking for is these deadlines and the lower the deadline, the better the chance you have of winning that block. And if you actually have the lowest deadline, then you win that block. So that's how it works. So you can see at the bottom there, 98.99, just kind of up to 100%. So it tells you the actual scan speed. And you can see there it's got through, um, you know, 50 terabytes in 50 seconds, which is really good. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that uh, with you guys. Okay, so that's the actual um, CPU miner. Um, there's a uh, GPU miner called um, Jade Miner, uh, which is a better miner for uh, mining burst coin. Uh, the advantage is that it scans your hard drives much faster than a CPU miner. Um, for example, if I use um, the most recent version of the Blago Miner, uh, to get through 50 terabytes, it takes about a minute to scan for all of those, which is actually pretty quick. Um, but if I use the GPU Miner, it takes about 30 seconds. Um, the advantage is that with if it takes a less time to scan through, it means that you're reporting to the pool quicker 
And so on short blocks, you've got a better chance of winning those blocks because you're getting through all your hard drives and reporting them as soon as possible. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a more uh, efficient way to do it, but it does use your graphics card to do that. But um, I'll show you that um, as well as. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you the uh, J miner now, which is a GPU miner for uh, Burstcoin. Um, I was gonna show you on my local machine, um, but for some reason it didn't quite work how I wanted. Um, just in the middle of that, a Windows 10 uh, pop-up uh, kind of interferes. Okay, so this is the actual uh, J miner, which is the GPU miner for Burstcoin. So this is what it looks like uh, when it's actually running. Um, so I'm just gonna close that now. And I'll just show you the actual uh, file itself. So the JMoner looks like this, and it's a Java um, application. So you've got the JMoner, so which is a configuration file. So if you go to Edit, and then there's only really a, a couple of different points that you would um, need to change. So you've got your plot paths. So just change those to your actual drive that has your plots on. So it can just be a single drive or it could be across multiple drives in different folder locations. So that's the first part that you need to change. The second part that you need to change is the numeric account ID. So just copy that from your wallet. Um, this is actually set for a different account of mine. Um, but it will just be uh, this number here, which has been uh, the one that we've been using for demonstration purposes. And then you've got your pool address, which is just the pool, and then you've got the uh, port number on the end there. Um, and then the one other thing is, because this is actually a open CL miner, um, you just need to change it to uh, the device that you're using. Sorry, I just kind of actually uh, missed it there. So where you've got the GPU section, you've got, by default, you would just use a platform ID would be zero, and the device ID would also be zero uh, by default. So that would work for most people. Um, but if you have a, a CPU that supports um, OpenCL um, computation, um, then you can change the device to, to suit as well. So, or if you have uh, multiple graphics cards, you might want to pick um, you know the second graphics card or something like that so just change your platform ID and device ID to suit your actual devices um, in most cases it will be zero for the platform ID and then device ID will be most likely zero or it might be one or it might be two if you have multiple graphics cards or like I say a CPU that supports um, OpenCL but that's really all the details that you need to change within the actual configuration file um, by default you just have this run.bat, um, I've got an actual extra batch file there as well um, to write, basically to run it in a higher priority, um, but I'll just show you the actual regular batch file, so if we just open edit that, it's included, um, and that's just what it looks like, so it's just a Java call and then it's the actual location, so the a version that we're using is 0.44, and I'll just run that and show you how it works. So this is kind of what it looks like and then it just yeah, opens up and it starts reading through all of your plots. Um, the interface is a little bit uh, messy, but what you want to be looking for is that it goes through each one of your sort of um, hard drives and it tells you what the total is of those hard drives in um, terabytes or in the gigabytes what you're using. It also tells you the uh, read speed and at the end it will give you a summary of, a, a summary of exactly how long it took to get through um, all of those um, drives. Um, in my case, I think it normally takes about 50 seconds, um, but I'm actually using the um, the GPU cores of my actual uh, CPU processor. Uh, you might get uh, some errors about overlapping. You want to try and have um, not overlapped plots, but uh, that's not something you need to massively concern yourself with at this point. Um, yeah, and then it just scans through, so 45, 34, and then obviously as each new block is found, it will start the whole process again, and it will keep reading each and every time, uh, approximately once every four minutes. Okay, guys, so this has been me showing you how to burst coin mine using your hard drives and the combination of a CPU miner and also a GPU miner as well. Um, hopefully you found it useful. Um, if you have um, any questions or comments or any areas that um, I may have um, not been clear or precise enough, uh, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and clear those uh, details up for you. Um, I've tried my best to explain it in a uh, hopefully easy to understand 
uh, way. Um, I know sometimes these things are a little complicated. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put all the links that you may need in the actual uh, description and that should hopefully get you um, set up. So thanks again for watching guys and uh, till next time. See ya.